All right, I'm in. You oh, guys got you. me? Yeah, I got you. I can see you. Sorry Are about you that. In? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're such an embarrassment. Hello, Ralph. <laughs> Hello. I've had poor uh, instruction here from our leader. I, no, you're just not following the instructions I put on our group page. Here's yeah, the link. Man. I put that up July 27th, man. Come on, get with it. Why should I start listening to you now after all exactly. these Exactly. Right. <laughs> Dread Bull and I uh, have been friends for over 40 years, so it's I a like yes. so tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> and Chop Top and I have been friends for over 30, so yeah. It's so, great yeah. to have good friends, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It certainly is. Yes, it is. And being able to do this, especially – you know, over the pandemic has been pretty awesome. So to stay oh, in yes. touch and and then mm -hmm. to talk about things that we've we've always loved, uh, but to do yeah. it together has Absolutely. has been extra special. You know, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I was just giving him a rundown, Mark, uh, Ralph, a rundown of how we were going to just you know do our our introduction, sure. um, and then kind of we have some specific questions for him. Then more like kind of like the theoretical kinds of um, or just kind of like what if kinds of questions that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, this is, this is surreal for us, Ralph. I just want to say it's, <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it is so cool. So we just thank you again. This Thanks. is like the, this has been the coolest opportunity to, to be able to sit down with, with all these guys that we just love and have followed forever. And like, that's cool to, to have this face to face, you know, digital face to face, but yeah, this is such a thrill, man. This is yeah, really mind blowing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. the world comes together on zoom nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We were using discord and uh, cause I had, I had misread that zoom cost it was an exorbitant price and i saw like uh -huh. oh, it's only 150 bucks a year we got to get this it's so much yeah. easier than having people try to go through discord oh, yeah. um but does the same thing so yeah all right I, uh, I, I teach on skype it's almost the same thing yeah yeah sure. yeah, right yeah. yeah that's one thing i wanted to, to talk with you about today yeah, with yeah. Your, your vocal yeah. teaching and Easy. those kinds Just of stuff ask me everything you want Okay. Great. Excellent. Yeah, Great. we're excited. We are really excited. So, um, well, now that the gang's all here, we'll uh, we'll go through. I don't, Dreadbull, have you listened to our last episode or not? I have not gotten to listen. To oh, okay. You, no. uh, I I put you uh, as our moniker fluid. Uh, <laughs> oh, I did see the yes. right up. <laughs> right, Dreadbull's his new name. <laughs> we won't bore Ralph with the yeah, details. It's a long story. story. It's a, a long, long story. story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take up too much of his time. Sure. <laughs> All right. I am Montag, master of illusion. What goes up must come down, but not always. Hey, I'm Chop Top. Keep it heavy. And this is Dreadbull. The renamed <laughs> Red Bull. And you are listening to Heavy, Heavy Metal, Metal Horror. Horror. Oh, kiddies, we have a great show tonight. So excited to introduce you to Ralph Sheepers, lead vocalist and energy behind bands like Gamma Ray, Primal Fear. Oh, welcome to our humble show, Ralph. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> uh, you know, I, we're, we're just going to be gushy this whole hour because <laughs> like, like what Dreadbull was saying is that, you know, this meeting people, having this time face to face has been just surreal. Um, yeah. And it's, it's something that we didn't really ever expect that would happen. And, and, and now that it's happening, it's it's like oh did you, do you remember we just did this this is awesome we, can you believe this we're so we're all in a little bit of disbelief so we appreciate that you're taking your time for us thank you absolutely the other question is why not I see <laughs> oh, God, well, you know right. that's a great question and and you know and I I guess that's kind of tails into you know the the first thing that maybe I just want to ask like how are you during doing uh, during all this pandemic shutdown we got the fourth wave of COVID going I mean how are things for you personally. Yeah, human being is uh, something who, which is somehow getting used to stuff. So I'm almost somehow, I got used to it. I mean, it's not easy playing live still. That's the only thing. I'm very creative in my studio. That's uh, the positive thing about it. So um, I bought new stuff. And so new stuff is also somehow really motivating me to write and 
compose songs and, and, and everything. And that's what I did the last year, you can say. And of course, yeah, we're we'll somehow sitting together, write new material and make the best out of the situation. That's excellent. Because not only are you singing, you got primal fear that you are recording a new record, right? Or you just actually just released a, an EP. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we uh, somehow everybody's collecting in, in a studio. So, so it's just demos we collect on our own. We put together everything in the end. I mean, I, I, when I compose, I never do any solo parts because I'm not a guitarist. I might have some riffs in my mind, but I just put them together the best I can and, and have melody in my mind to it. And, and uh, then, uh, for instance, tomorrow I meet up with Tom here in my studio. We, we create, somehow write a new song and, and I need him for the middle part and the solo parts and everything, of course. So that's, that's how we work and, and, and Matt and, and everybody we sit, in the end, we sit together. We have a, in, our initial ideas, but in the end, everything is cooked in one, in one kitchen. Nice. <laughs> nice. I, I've, I've seen that on previous interviews where, oh, I'm sorry. No, Can you hear me still? Okay. I didn't see yes. my thing light up there. Uh, in previous interviews where uh, you, you talked about having, all five members of the band contributing in the creative process and the songwriting and everything. And uh, how does that work? How do you guys resolve differences and issues? I mean, that seems like a lot of cooks in the kitchen, like you, like you just mentioned. Uh, you just thumb I mean, wrestle yeah. for it or duke it out. You grow together. You also grow <laughs> sure. together in terms of songwriting. I mean, we we when we started, we all did in, we did everything in the rehearsing studio. We, uh, but um, you know, after all these years when technique changed and we got all our recording systems at home, of course, everybody's collecting, that's what I just said. And then we put together everything again in the rehearsing studio or uh, we swap files. That's how it, work, uh, it works nowadays. I think everybody, every band is working that way, especially when the members are spread all over the place in Europe or also international sometimes, you know, it is international, I mean, it's, it's uh, France, Germany, Sweden. And so that's the reason why we have to work via internet. Yeah. But like I said, when we were recording, uh, we're still rehearsing the rehearsal studio first. And then we go to uh, record the drums, for instance, in Denmark and Jacob Hansen studio. And um, I mean, I have everything up, geared up here in my studio with a microphone, great compressors and stuff and all. Well, my system, my recording system, my DAW, that's how you call it nowadays, the DAW. And um, I'm uh, singing in my studio, recording everything here on my own, but swap it back and forth with Matt, who was always the producer, and uh, getting my green checked mark or maybe some, not, not critics, but some change, some, some somehow, some ch uh, if there's some changes he wants, I'm working on the changes as well. We swap it back and forth. And of course, sometimes it's also coming here in my studio and we work together. That says a lot about, you know, five members of the band all having input like that and not, not just falling apart. Like there's no yeah, everybody's crazy to, egos that are yeah, just... Yeah, no, everybody's open to compose, of course. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, what we always had in, in Primal Fear. And I think it's also basically the standard in every band nowadays uh, that everybody who's who's got ideas is, is invited to con to contribute some you know. Fantastic. So Ralph, is this, uh, uh, can we expect, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, being a big Primal Fear fan that I am, uh, can we expect another studio release? Because is that what you're currently busy doing or are you working yes. on a solo project again or? No, I mean, yes, of course, some, some ideas which I collect might not fit to Primal Fear, but I always keep in a maybe even, at the moment, there's nothing real scheduled or planned for a solo, another solo record. It was just something I did something together with Frontiers back in the days, 2011. But nowadays, uh, it's everything I do now is collecting uh, for Primal Fear with the other guys. That's, uh, that's the major focus at the moment. Wonderful. Thanks. Um, how did you first get into music and, and singing? Like, at what age were you that you started... Uh, you know, being attracted to the music, you know, as a genre. Can't remember. <laughs> no, I mean, I was a kid. I mean, I was nine years old when I sung to the radio. My oh. mom's radio, the German Schlager music, and she, she, really, she heard very early that I can sing, you know, I, which I never noticed because I was just singing along, even did some harmonies. And, uh, Yes, but uh, then, of course, in school, when all those bands like Sweet and ABBA back in the days and Bay City Rollers and the 70 glam uh, rock bands came up, 
then everything started for me somehow. I was 12, 13, 14 years old when this really kicked me in. And I really fancied to play also in a band once, even if it's just for a guitarist, because I still didn't, uh, did not notice that I'm some kind of lead singer guy, you know, guy. So in the end, um, a little bit later, we started in the school band and put up some uh, 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 plastic gear, <laughs> how you can say, plastic mm -hmm. microphone through a radio recorder, whatever. <laughs> it sounded like shit, but you know, we were, pr <laughs> we were proud producing some noise. And, and that's how we started in the end with some mates in school. Thanks. And uh, baby steps, baby steps, you know, learning, learning, learning. Everything was learning. And I think there's going to be some further questions how everything went on in the end. So I, I might stop here and wait for the next question. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, I, I mean, you have the influence, as you said, the Bay City Rollers and ABBA. And around that time, that's when the, the new wave of British heavy metal started, started expanding too. So I, were there any influences in there for your musical yeah, I mean, tastes and, and how you, you wanted to proceed, you know, yourself in music, not so much necessarily singing, but like musical styles that grab you that were heavier? Yes, I mean, that came later because, I mean, I did not notice when the new wave of British heavy metal really started. Uh, I was still a little bit maybe too young. So mm -hmm. I was still um, in the basic role of Sweet. I forgot Sweet, of course. Yeah, yeah. F Win Abba and so forth. I was still in that phase. And then all of a sudden, the first uh, metal stuff I heard was Van Halen, Eruption, for oh, instance. That right. was okay. And, and then uh, Iron Maiden with... Uh, the, the, the first single, uh, what's his name again? Oh, that's Paul Diano. That's Paul, Paul Diano. I'm, I'm sorry, how can I forget? <laughs> no, it's okay. And I'm not good in names. Anyway, yeah, and uh, then Unleashed in the East, in the East from Priest, kicked my ass. Yes. Especially with the high vocals and everything. That was something which was something out of space. And and uh, so I fancied, and I was also trying to sing high, and it worked. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was walking around in the area in my hometown and in, in the alleys and, 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 and screamed high notes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can imagine, you can imagine the people, uh, they thought somebody's got murdered. Or something. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really good. And I noticed that my, my buddy said, hey, Rob, it sounds really good. It sounds equal, you know. And so, okay, well, maybe I can do this. <laughs> nice. Wow, that's amazing. Because uh, yeah, that... You know, going back to like my when I first heard you, it was in Gamma Ray, yeah. and what, well, you know, we kind of define that genre. We call it power metal or whatever you want to call it. But it, look, bands like like Halloween and and all those bands that were kind of playing that dually guitar, very intricate melodies, um, you know, a lot of double bass. Uh, what what about that power metal? You know, attracted you? What was like? You said, yeah, I want to sing that. I want to be in this kind of kind of band. Yeah, I mean, that was a little bit later. I mean, I was in bands like Tyrant Pace before recorded already three albums, vinyl. I was doing, I was out of school learning a job parallel to the, to my first uh, recordings, recording a vinyl uh, LP back in the days. And um, it was night sessions and go night sessions at music and, and day daylight daytime sessions at work. <laughs> so that was mm. also hard. But you know it's never easy, so you you have to you have to grind uh, to go to go wherever you want to go and, and and follow your passion and and follow your dreams. Otherwise, maybe nothing will work out. So that's what I did. And so the first three records came out from Time Pace, which were released, and then things happened like you know strange managers spend a lot of money and we, we were not involved but we had to pay because we were the company in the end and so forth so there was, so business stuff happened which we you know as a young musician you don't care about business so much which sometimes is a big mistake so that's what we somehow forgot about so we had to uh, separate ways to pay a uh, burden and to pay uh, bullshit which some so-called managers some cost for us and then, of course, there were some personal issues and so forth. But, you know, that's when you're a young musician. It's like maybe your first relationships with, with girls. You, 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 maybe you don't going to marry your first girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And th th uh, that's what happened. And then uh, I heard that Kai left Halloween. We worked together first. Um, uh, he was a producer of a demo for a band from Hamburg. I couldn't remember the name. I think it was Prophecy or something. And... Uh, 
he wanted me because he knew me from Tire and Pace and he wanted me to be a singer and we worked together the first time. He was still in Halloween back in the days and when that happened. But later when he got out of Halloween, uh, I thought about maybe calling him up and he, saw, he thought the same thing. So let's call up Ralph. So we thought about each other and called each other up and uh, started the, the Kai Hansen Sheeps project with the record company wanted to have Kai Hansen project or later than Gamma Ray, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. I guess one of the questions I have, Ralph, also, uh, recently this year, uh, earlier in the year, uh, Michael Schenker released his uh, new album, Immortal, and you have a couple tracks in it. What, what, can you tell us the process, what was that like, uh, uh, Michael getting in contact with you and writing for that album with him and, uh, you know, and doing those couple tracks because it's a tremendous album and uh, yeah. you really uh, shine on that as well. <clears throat> Michael Foss, who was also a member of Michael Schenker, the team, he's a German Michael Foss. He, he, he uh, called me up or sent me an SMS, actually, or, and asked me if I want to join for two songs. And, and I mean, that's a great honor. I remember being a fanboy of Michael Schenker. I mean, come on, UFO into the arena and stuff. That's, that, that's uh, pretty much just the, the, air, the time when I got in touch with the new wave of British heavy metal, being a fanboy. And how, how awesome is that if, if the, such a guy wants you on his, on your record, on his record? So there was uh, not any chance to say no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, see, he sent the tracks and I liked them. And um, pretty much uh, I was very happy about the outcome in the end. And, and I heard that, that he also was because I never really got in touch with Michael Schenker. He's got the management and everything uh, speaking for him, which is I'm totally fine with that. But um, they were saying that he was very pleased about my work, and I'm really happy about that. So I'm also really happy about the outcome of uh, the songs I sung on. Absolutely. That's a, it's a great album, and those tracks, you, you do shine on those. So. Thank you. Yeah, along those same lines, I, I, I know that you know, you've done a lot of guest appearances on many, many bands. Uh, a couple jumped out at me because I'm big fans of these, these groups. Uh, uh, Arion. Uh, Arjun Lucas and I noticed you did a uh, uh, all I could find was one track uh, journey on the ways of time but you know all those high notes like that, that whole song is is all high notes it's fantastic so have you done like how did that come about have you done any other tracks with with Arion uh, no that there? was the only one and I think that was the very first um, project which I was taking part somebody else asked me to take uh, to be part of it was actually the second album with with I think it was the first album we did with, with Primal Fear here okay. close to my hometown in the studio in Winterbach at the House of Music. And he came down from Holland uh, recording with his recording gear into oh, the studio okay. and we recorded the vocals for the song there. And that, I think it was, was it 1999 or whatever that was? Yeah. Yeah, that was a long time. Yeah, Universal yeah. Migrator. That's that's yeah. that album's been out a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. I wish he'd bring you back. You know, uh, with like a, a whole uh, character role. You know, he, he yeah, has yeah. characters on all of his albums that kind of go throughout the entire album. That would be fantastic. Yeah, true. I'll I'll keep an eye out. Maybe he'll he'll call you again someday. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Never say never. <laughs> sure. There's many things going on nowadays because that's mm -hmm. also something which. Uh, the new technique and the internet made easier now. Yeah. You can sing easily for different bands in your own studio. If, you, if they want to have my voice on their songs, just call me up and I do because I just switch on the microphone and sing. <laughs> Send my files and there you go. Yeah. Oh, then obviously the single on the newest album with, with Tarja from uh, Nightwish, formerly of yes. Nightwish. Yes. Um, uh, how did that go about? Did you guys write that with her in mind or uh, you know, how, did, how did you come to collaborate with her? Matt came up with the idea to do this single, the, the ballad, um, I Will Be Gone, as a duet with a female vocalist. We did that before on, another, on the other album, uh, New Religion, with, uh, was it uh, from Epica Simone? We did that Simone, uh, yeah. every time it rains. So we thought uh, I Will Be Gone would be also a great song to share with a female vocalist. And uh, so we had some names in our, in our mind and... Uh, in the end, it came that Taja, Taja did it, and it was just fantastic that she did it because the yeah, it yeah. perfectly fits, and it was it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. And I'm still very happy that we did it. So it was a great idea for Matt and the record company. They they had the idea to do this, and it turned out well. Because her yeah. voice is kind of haunting. 
you know, <laughs> you've got really it, it is a haunting, ethereal kind of voice, but there's <laughs> power behind it. And then you you have that power, and you both have those crazy ranges. So it, it sounds beautiful together, both of you. Thank you. you yes, know. I think so. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Now, did you ever? You said you never got to meet Michael Schenker when you were recording, but have you? Did you meet him since then? Have you met him? But he, but he can't remember. I mean, oh. it was, <laughs> it was, it was in the fanboy boy time when he visited uh, close to my hometown, uh, Holger Dolcitski, who was working for Scorpions. He did the pyro back in the days, and he got he was in touch with these guys from the Schenker family. And once uh, he visited uh, uh, my Holger Dolcitski was a manager of the early uh, time and pace time, and so he. He called uh, called uh, my bandmate Ralph and me. He was his name also was Ralph. Uh, hey, Michael is in the house. Would you come b- pass by? And we, were, oh my God, Michael Schenker! <laughs> <laughs> and he was the fanboy situation. That's why he can't remember. I think it's 40, <laughs> almost forty years ago now. Okay. Yeah. It, it's so, kind of. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dreadbull. I, I was going to just start off those same things. You know, the fanboy kind of things. You know, we talked about that right before we started the show with you and like yeah. the, those situations where you've you've gotten to meet your your heroes your your idols you know musically and stuff uh, wh- what are some of those do you have any good cool stories about meeting you know some of your idols over the years and or oh, playing yes. or touring yes, with them yes. yeah. the good thing is we um, when you are friends afterwards because if there's a lot of respect going on and it is respect mm-hmm. it's only respect respecting each other's work you know so uh, I think that's basic, basically in, in heavy metal, that's, that's the case anyway, that we are respecting each other a lot. There's not, I mean, there's a little bit of competition maybe here and there, but, but basically not so much. I think like in other genres, we become buddies pretty much pretty fast. So uh, when I met Rob Half for the first time, for instance, I was just shaking and I was already with uh, fame, not famous, but I was also doing music with Gamma Ray and in time and, and, and Prime Theater already. Mm-hmm on a certain level of success also so but anyway meeting him and being on the metal gods tour uh, then 2003 in america with him together that was just amazing you know so uh it was great to have chats with him and just a wonderful person he is you know always great. a gentleman and that's really nice so that's that's a, that's a great great part of the business meeting your idols and then become sure. friends. <laughs> oh yeah that's fantastic yeah, because that that can be very a scary, you know, proposition to meet an idol, especially if they don't live up to that expectation or if they treat you badly in a way, which is kind of what we talked about in our last last week's episode. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you meet the the guys maybe on the wrong foot, and then on that, and this picture will last forever, you know. So right, I it's true. Was, I was always lucky to have him on. No, Bruce Dickinson once I, I met him uh, when he was playing Stuttgart. He was really pissed, you know. <laughs> so, but but uh, after, but I met him afterwards again, and so he was nice, you know. But uh-huh. it's, it's always it's always a matter of when do you meet the people? Sure. Do they have yeah. a bad hair day, or whatever they have. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It has those those times where you've met your heroes and and you've become friends with them, and you've had those fanboy moments too. Does that influence you on how you react to fans who come up to you? Because, you know, like I said, when we talked before we started, we were all really nervous and you've made us feel very relaxed and at home and, and, and comfortable. Thank you. But there's still that nervousness. Like, we, my God, we're going to talk to Ralph Sheepers. Like, yeah. you know, and, then, and so we have those fanboy feelings. So yeah. does that influence you when people come up to you? Do you, do you remember being a fanboy yourself? And Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just the way I am. I will not copy anybody in terms of how he, he's behaving. Uh, to people i mean i think basically that's that's the way how you uh got uh taught by your parents how to behave in the end right if you have uh, somehow if you're friendly or not i mean like i said there are moments sometimes also on the road when 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 you when you're pissed and when when everything just uh, doesn't does not work and all of a sudden many people will show up and you're in a bad mood but you'd still and then you're trying to be the actor then you have right. to just switch your switch the switch in the head and said, "Oh come on! I mean, they come to see your show, and you have to be nice." But basically, you are a nice pe- person. But sometimes sure. you have, like I said, uh, I don't want to speak how people see me. I just try to behave as friendly as I can. 
So, but sometimes when you have, um, like, once again, well, people sometimes don't know what's going on. And some people just write, no matter where it is on Messenger and, and on any social media, and expect somehow a conversation. And it's just getting too much because there's too many people in the end, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they feel like they know you in a way. Because and they, I understand. I, right. I understand this. I totally understand. But yeah. uh, then you explain it. Sorry, I don't have time. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And that's very understandable as well. I mean, we all have busy lives, so yeah. you know. Um, well, since you've been working with all these uh, other musicians, when you're on tour and you become friends, have you? Have, have other musicians reached out to you and and told you how much your music has influenced them or how much they ad admire what you do? And and if so, how does how does that make you feel? Yeah, sometimes I'm really surprised because uh, there's statements coming from people which I also somehow adore or whatever. I, I respect their work. Mm -hmm. And when, when this is coming back, I mean, Todd Latore from Queensryche, now Team Queensryche, he came up to me when, I, when we met in America and he said he was worshipping our music for years. And that's a great compliment from such a guy who's just a fabulous voice, you know, and, and, and also a great musician he is. So... That's what I meant before, having the respect from each other and, and, and not being somehow shy to tell it. So, because some people might have respect or might uh, adore what you do, but, uh, but I don't want to tell him. Otherwise, he's, uh, <laughs> somehow he, some, maybe he will fly high in the air or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the end, it's always um, being humble and remembering where you come from because, you know, not everything was good all the time, but you, and that, that's what you always have to remember too, that it can easily just change during the night, at being and that it's different and and um, maybe then you wish you you would have been nice before. Sure. Yeah. Now, Ralph, it, it, to me, I had another question. Uh, it yeah. seems to me that it, with each subsequent release for Primal Fear, uh, the popularity of the band continues to rise. Uh, do, do you sense that as well from the, the be early beginnings to now, or is it, uh, it just seems like a natural progression. There's more and more fans, you know, more and more yeah. people listening to Primal Fear yourself. Yes. It just seems, uh, yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful fan base you guys seem to have. Yeah, I mean, that's, we're really happy and glad about this fact because, you know, uh, that shows us that we are maybe doing the right thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, uh, and it's, it's, that's a great, it's just great, you know, I don't find the words, as you can tell, as it's not my native language, English anyway, but it, it would, would not be easy in German also to say this because, you know, it's, it's always a give and take. And, um, you know, that's just great to know that people like Primal Fears music and um, the, the fan base is growing, like you said. And um, that's really, really honoring. And it's also reward, uh, reward for, the, for the great, uh, for all the work you put in. I mean, you have all the passion and, and you work for music and that's the reward when you get such a great feedback from the fans and from the people. Thank you. One thing I've noticed about Primal Fear is that they, you get heavier with like every progressive album. Like there's this, I mean, the sound is crunchy and there's elements of those, you know, you could hear that kind of classic power metal sound. But is, is the fact that you're getting heavier and more complex and intricate uh, with every album, is this something that's intentional or is it just kind of happening organically as you, as you go and grow as a band? Like you see what you're doing and like, yeah, we want to do more of that. It's both in the end because you're, you're growing as a musician. You're growing in terms of how you want to you develop your sound as a guitarist, as a drummer, as a bass player, as a vocalist. You're always trying to progress. Uh, if you're staying on the same level, this is uh, it's not good. You always have to grow a little bit more, right? So that's also in terms of how you want to have to, your sound. And if we record a record nowadays, we totally know already how we want to sound like. And everybody, like I said before, has its own system and is, is able to create the sound already. But there's another a big art putting this together in the end. And that's what uh, Jacob Hansen does for us in Denmark. And that's the reason why we always fly to him, Matt and I, and also the other guys are invited, but sometimes they can't. And then we always uh, fly there and, and uh, sit together. And, and Jacob absolutely knows what we want. What we, uh, but we, what we are doing is just change bits and pieces here and there 
volume levels or maybe more high ends here, here, low ends there. And that's it. So it's a little bit of tweaking. Uh, but basically, it's uh, we know what how we want to sound like, and, and Jacob also knows how we want to sound like, and, and uh, that's how we still grow and evolve in every uh, release we're we're bringing out. Yeah, along those lines, like you know, you guys have put out what thirteen albums, Primal Fear, nearly twenty five years of music, and yeah. you, you kind of remind me of uh, Overkill in a way where there's this relentless energy, you know, that has never decreased over all those years. How do you keep that up? How do you keep that energy and that that power that you guys have had after after so long? You know, <laughs> it's, it's loving what you do. Otherwise, sure. otherwise you can't do it. I mean, I mean, if you're living, if you're living your dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it will somehow never stop because that's what it's, it's it's like floating through our veins otherwise maybe there would be no idea anymore but uh, well, I'm glad we still have ideas and that's also the advantage <laughs> of having five writing members even six so so that's always good to have a bunch of songs together for every release right yeah that's, that's yeah. amazing yeah, I also noticed uh, along those lines, uh, we talk about progression in your guys' music and even getting heavier and stuff, but there's those individual tracks, especially on maybe the last few releases or the 12 minute, 13 minute epics or whatever. And there's some, there's actually some progressive metal moments in throughout yeah. some of those and stuff. And uh, I just, is that something that, uh, I mean, we can expect even, you know, you're going to develop even further, or is that something that your guys are already working on a track for the next album that's, along those lines uh i mean because yeah, it wasn't always you didn't excuse, i'm sorry you, you didn't always have yeah. like every album didn't have those epic you know those long 10 11 12 minute songs and it seems like the last few you guys have included the track on each one yes i mean the good thing is you don't have to uh, be in a situation say we have to do something uh, equal or the, the same thing the next time this comes up uh, very free and very you know just uh just comes up if you have an idea and and it continues in your continues in your mind how the song should be somehow changing here and there and that's the great team of Matt and Magnus for instance what they always uh, do they work together uh, amazingly in, in, in that matter of, of, of in writing long epical tracks mm -hmm. that's basically from from their feathers in the end right, right. But, but, you know, I mean, once again, you don't sit there and say for the next album, uh, last time we had 13 minutes, so next time we need 21 minutes or something. <laughs> That's not how we proceed, right? Not trying to be dream theater, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were four albums I noticed that kind of came after one another. Devil's Ground, then Seven Seals, New Religion, and 16.6, where yeah. these themes of like spirituality, devils, angels, this kind of combat, it was very thematic. And, and I think Devil's Ground, or it seemed like there was this, a story arc that was continuing. Um, are, are they all kind of connected in that way? Or was this just, just the kind of something you guys were writing about and continued to writing about because it was interesting to you? Because I could see how there, there were some yeah. themes that were connecting this like magnum opus of the like spiritual warfare and evil and good and yeah, that was kind of interesting to, to hear them in totality like that yeah but but that's coincidental it, it's not somehow okay. meant to be connected but uh you are right there's always great stories beyond the bible for instance from uh, where you write from or whatever whatever not being too christian whatever you and it's just uh as heavy metal music is pretty, pretty, pretty much devil linked <laughs> anyway, yeah. you know, you, you come up, you come up with the devil every time somehow, which some maybe sometimes for some people sounds cheesy, but you know, in the end, we are for some really lyrics we don't care, and also we don't somehow find uh, deeper, uh, deeper stories and deeper, deeper. Uh, causes or whatever but for some we are and for, for some we don't for some people for for instance uh what was the song I forgot the name of my good name <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway i remember that i wrote lyrics how we started to make music in leather and chains and whatever mm -hmm. along came the devil now i got the title okay the devil, okay the devil is included again Sure. So you just write whatever comes into your mind and also which sounding uh, somehow musically, right? Because you, sometimes you have to rhyme, sometimes you don't. But you don't, it's always good if you have a good rhyme together 
and you know and if the story makes a little bit of a sense fine then it's, <laughs> it's it's okay for me you know sure and 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 it's no lie we we went through ups and downs in our in our uh, career with primal fear and that was somehow the devil which sometimes was sometimes was interrupting our good time we had so was, along came the devil so in the end um, we're still but we still are here right <laughs> nice nice so yeah, I'll I'll jump jump in. We're we got to talk about the voice at some point. So you know, you, you spoke about Halford and and hearing him for the first time kind of blew you away. And and then you, you've gone on to and to achieve that kind of vocal power and that kind of range. And and the fact that you've maintained it now for so many years. You know, I've watched some some of your recent shows in the last couple of years on YouTube, and it's still there, you know, the high range and all, uh, all that power is still there. How in the hell have you managed to keep that going for so long? Well, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm really lucky. And, I'll, and I also know what I do uh, because when you are a teacher, you're not just uh, telling bullshit to the people, you know what, what you're talking about. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm doing my own exercises too at home. And um, basically nature ch is changing a lot. I mean, this is a tissue. It's a muscle. It's a muscle. And it's also somehow, altering in the end right so mm -hmm. it's also getting older in the like every, like everybody does a little bit but as, as long as you get your workarounds with uh vocal maintenance and trying to keep it in shape as long as you can then it's a it's a good advantage but you know uh, uh talking about um sounding like somebody that was never my intention to copy anybody it was just like i said i was lucky that i sounded like having the high belted voice which is called the belting head voice right so that's mm -hmm. a technique it's a technique in the end it's not somehow copying one singer or the other singer it's a technique it's like an opera singer there's many opera singers sounding similar as well it's just a technique sure. you're singing you know yeah and i didn't mean to apply you're ripping off rob Halbert no, no, or I anything totally, that's a totally you. a compliment because yeah, that's no, no, i got i got you here but yeah you know, I'm, I'm just trying to somehow uh, explain I'm sure. not complaining, and I'm also not <laughs> trying to justify myself, you know. Yeah, we're not <laughs> complaining either. Yeah. Keep it up. Uh, you know, if you're going to sound like anyone, Halford's a great, uh, it's a great, Ooh. great guy to sound that, like. That's too, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, because it's strong, and there's such a powerful vibrato uh -huh. as well. But it's not just the highs, but you got the growly kind of low ends as well. And you go seamlessly back yeah, and man. forth between them. And, and it's like this vocal acrobatics, you know. Um, yeah. The lower you know, is getting even lower nowadays. <laughs> okay. Well, I think it's, that's with age. I think it's a natural tendency. Absolutely. But that you can still hear, you know, hit these high notes. It's like listening to King Diamond. You know, yeah. he can yeah. still hit those notes. He still does the growls. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing. Uh, so you must be doing something right. I, I was going to ask, like, if we had time, like, take us through a vocal lesson so we can all do, whoa, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, but scare but, the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll go out in our, our own alleys and start screaming. You yeah. know? <laughs> That's also something. It has to be there from nature a little bit. Sure. I mean, there has to be the rudimental stuff has to be there. Otherwise, you, you can't do it in the end. I can I can teach everybody how to scream if if it's not there, right? Sure. Thanks. Uh, all right. I, what's the thing you love most about being in a famous band? Well, I mean, uh, going in, on stage. That's absolutely something I, I. I mean, that's what we're doing it for, right? I mean, if you go out there and have this adrenaline kicking in in your blood to your blood when you hit the stage and especially at the big festivals in Europe or also everywhere around the globe, wherever the festival is. I mean, remembering Sao Paulo in front of the months of, of rock crowd, it was just amazing. Also, Wacken every year, hopefully. It will, all will come back the way we remember it. But, you know, that's, wow. It's just, you, you can't explain what's going on in your in your body, in, in your 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 endorphins at the moment it's just amazing and that's that's why you get addicted to it and that's the natural addic addiction to it and um yes playing in front of the crowd is just the best thing as a musician as uh, it's just always great but also the creative phase like now when you're in studio and when you are somehow witnessing the process of how everything is growing together is always also just great so what there's many there's oh, many I many Sorry, there's many segments. So uh, you you like being a musician. 
Yeah. You spoke about the, some of the venues. What are some of the more interesting or craziest <laughs> venues that you've ever uh, played? Do you have any cool stories about some of the venues you've been to? Oh, yes. There has been, in America, there was, there's been churches where priests got murdered and everything, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not during priest, the show, I hope. Uh, no, pre- <laughs> no, that's in, 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 the his, in the history, a priest oh. got murdered in the basement or whatever. <laughs> you know, so, there was some, some horror horror uh, scenes uh, which would you fancy when you were playing it you would had had the rehearsal room next to the room where the priest was murdered everything is <laughs> wow that's, that's crazy yes i mean in also in south america there are some locations where you really were really happy that you survived <laughs> <laughs> no kidding <laughs> that's, yeah. that's 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 pretty pretty crazy uh yeah, yeah. well uh, i I had lost track of my original question because um, I was just like picturing these, these dangerous places, but maybe yeah. it dovetails into this. I was going to ask like, what's, what's your least favorite thing about being in a favorite, favorite band? I mean, you on stage, that's the pinnacle. Uh, what, what's the low aspect? What's the part like you could really do without, or, you know? Yes. The, after four weeks in the tour bus, <laughs> <laughs> it's not so easy anymore because the air is getting thicker <laughs> and everything. <you> know. <laughs> And as a vocalist, anyway, the vocal health is not so easy on the road because you don't sleep so good. I don't don't sleep good in those nightliner buses. Oh, of course, it'd be, I like to be together with my mates and everything, and with my guys in the band, and then also the crew because they're also included in the bus. But sometimes it's just getting too much when you have three or four weeks going in a row. Then uh, it's not so easy anymore. And um, yes, that's what I don't want to miss also the traveling in planes and so forth. It has to be there. I mean, it has to, it has to be because you don't, you want to go to places, right? But uh, waiting on airports, it's all, it's all, every time it's hurry up and wait. I mean, just, re- just imagine if you're doing a festival show on a Saturday, you, you, you're flying maybe on a Friday evening or Saturday morning, and you're away for three days for maybe 45 minutes on stage when you do a festival, right? So that's a lot of work for for the 45 minutes you do in music. But that's also that's again no complaining. It's just a, an explain, explain explaining the situation, which is sometimes what is sometimes not so easy being a musician. But that's uh, it's all doable and handle you can handle it it's no it's no it's no problem it's just it's just the downside somehow yeah most most fans don't get to see that aspect of the musician's life and i remember carrie king from slayer saying essentially this something very similar to that yeah. where he said you know the thing he hates most he hates traveling he I loves mean, it, he loves the two hours he's on stage or hour and yeah. a half but, but the rest of the day he hates being on the buses he hates the crappy hotels he he hates all the waiting in line you know hurry up and wait like you said so yeah i mean you're going to a venue when you had a show the day the night before you're leaving at two or three or four a.m whenever the crew is finished with the with packing and the stuff and everything and still the adrenaline is in your blood so the 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 night time is shifting somehow into the daytime. So your breakfast is around 2 p.m. Mm. <laughs> and you get to a club in the early in the morning sometimes and you can't even take a poo somewhere, whatever you take. <laughs> you can't take a shower. It's cold. It's oh, messy man. from the night before. There was another band playing the night before. Everything is still messed up. The, the promoter doesn't care. You're just being treated like uh, scum everywhere sometimes, you know. And that's the downside, you know, you don't, people don't see that. And, and when you're having this 90 music on stage and then doing the show, people think, oh, sex and drugs and rock and roll. They're going to have that or 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 that the different worlds are starting again sometimes. Of course, there are parties uh, once in a while backstage or whatever, but not all the time. And then given all that, you know, you might be slightly off the next night because of all those things you just described. And then you just get criticized from a bunch exactly. of people because you're, you're exactly. off a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody has this little piece of shit now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, recording recording uh-huh. every, every step you do on stage. Yeah. Oh, there's a the wrong note. He's having a bad day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, yeah. this is this is too good. It has to be playback. You know, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. just so crazy, you know, so. Yeah. And how do you deal? I'm I'm sorry. How do you deal yeah. with that? You know, we talked about that a little bit 
on our on a previous interview. You know, yeah. all the negativity and uh, it seems to be pretty pervasive nowadays. And yes, given the anonymity of the internet now, how do how do you deal with that? How do you compartmentalize? I was, I was really pissed once, but you, if as long <laughs> as more, the more you read, it's uh, the worse it is in the end. So you stop reading. So because mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes I even. I am the guy who's sometimes answering people and, and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize or whatever, because they think they can do whatever they want, writing, sure. writing shit about people who they don't know what they went through and everything. And, and again, this is, no, this is no complaining. I know it's my job and, and, I, and I want to deliver and I, I'm, I'm trying to do my very best to deliver every day, but sometimes it's not possible because all those surroundings we were talking about and sometimes mm -hmm. you also have a cold and whatever, and then people are standing there and oh, Ralph Sheeper, yeah. whatever. You know? uh -huh. Yeah, but hey, it, uh, you have to be somehow also, you have to have a thick skin, but sometimes it's getting thinner, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the reality of, of the you know, life on the road, you know, like you said. And, and I mean, I know when, when I would travel, even if I'm just driving six hours, my body feels off. Like I'm dehydrated, yeah. <laughs> then I tend to overhydrate. Then at two in the morning, I'm just like sick, you know, to my stomach. And, you know, so I, I you know, I can't imagine being on the road for a month or two or three yeah, under those we'll kinds be. of conditions. Like when, like it has to, your body just has to adjust to it eventually, you know, but. We were talking about the Metal Gods tour before when, when, with the Halford and Testament and all those uh, bands, 2003. We were literally leaving uh, Frank Stuttgart to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to New York. And then we got picked up by the nightliner driver who was waiting for us, but he never said he was here because uh, he, he thought we needed a little bit of rest. He said, I, I thought you, not, you guys need a little bit of rest. And we were in a hurry because we were hopping on the show. And it was just traveling from Stuttgart to New York, changing clothes and going on stage. Oh, my. And for me, that is without sleep because I can't sleep in those planes, right? And as a vocalist, you need sleep. But in the end every time you still do it somehow you know uh but it's just again an explanation how hard it is sometimes yeah well, I, you thank you for telling us all that because i think there's yeah. a lot there are a lot of people who just see that glamorous lifestyle because i think that was part of what what has been packaged about the rock and roll you know career is this yeah. is all you're seeing you're seeing the excess you're seeing the sex drugs and and all that stuff but you're not seeing traveling on the road you're not seeing these yeah. other kind of shitty conditions yes. that you may have to live with and not a not a and that's only part of of the life but then you have the business aspect with like you mentioned bad managers and lawyers come in and yeah. you know and like what i'd heard about slayer is that by the time they're all said and done because everyone had lawyers they're only making about 10 percent of what they should have been making you know because they made bad business decisions when they were younger and i'm just my heart's breaking for them in a way like it, and there's like you could see they're just not happy because they got to do it you know yeah. and yeah. i thought man you have it's just you don't see that kind of uh ugly side of of that life and i wonder if yeah. that would that would kind of balance out and maybe maybe tell some of these idiots who can who, yeah, who use this, that, you know. again it's it's balancing out because we also had the other have the other part we also have uh, the rock and rolly stuff and the glamour <laughs> sometimes we have and and when you get invited to have dinner with a promoter, whatever, and you be treated well, it's still existing. So the uh, respectful uh, promoters and the respectful managements are still there. So it's still happening. That's it's good. just some, sometimes uh, it's hard, you know. <laughs> yeah. A common theme that we've talked about before covering a, a lot of other bands is uh, – it seems like early in a lot of uh, metal bands in particular in their careers, they get pressure from their labels to change, to change who they are, to become more, you know, radio friendly. Uh, did you face any of that with Primal no, Fear? Great. Luckily, ne we never did because I think we were somehow always acceptable the way we are. Mm -hmm. well, that's, yeah. a, that's unusual, it seems like to me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I want to. And we we oh, also we're also very lucky that uh, that uh, label boss in our, for instance, now Nuclear Blast was always a fan also of our music and and, and also worshipped and and somehow respected uh, the way we work and liked our sound and it's also a good thing. So he would never somehow 
say uh, change your style or change your uh, your your way of writing music or whatever. So we would never do that. Wow, good for you guys. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. probably a rare exception. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. think, you know, like where the label said, you guys are doing what you're doing and we don't have to worry about messing with you. You know, that's, yeah. that's otherwise it's, it's also not honest in the end. If you get forced into something. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And the fans will, will, will pick up on that. I think you know, so they'll, they'll know when it's not authentic or when it feels forced or canned, yes. you know, like, yeah, you're, you're going through the motions, but there's no soul to it. And, um, you know, when, when I hear songs like born again, which I cannot get out of my head, it, it mm -hmm. is haunting to me is that that chorus there is so much emotion and pathos and ache um, in that. And it's like, it, it's a beautiful song. So I want to thank you for that song. Uh, I wrote, I wrote the lyrics when I came home from a funeral for my buddy. Oh, and, wow. and okay. that's of course. And, and I, I think I sung it the other, the very next day. So there's so much truth and passion in that, that I can really say uh, wow. it is heartfelt. Yes. Well, it, it certainly sounds like it. You know, I've got yeah. several iterations of it, and and when I feel it, yeah. it's like it it just it hits me in the heart. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. just music. It's like I, I feel it. So, uh, wow. And well, now having that story to it, I certainly you know can understand yeah. that. Um, yeah. You know, you had mentioned you know life on the road. It, it can be it can be hard. But what do you do on the days off? Like you got a break between shows and. You know, I know like Nico McBrain likes to golf. So, you know, how do you spend your time trying to relax, you know, on the road as best you can? <laughs> Traveling day. No. <laughs> you, see, you, still sit, you still sit in the line, line of driving not only 800 miles, then it's 2,000 miles maybe. <laughs> but no, sometimes you have an off day and just relax. And uh, for me as a vocalist, that, uh, it's always good to have off days. The guitarists always are bitching about off days because I want to do shows. It's, it's breaking me up and everything. But I'm happy to have, to have, to have that those days for my voice so i shut basically shut up the entire day and we um, when we are in america for instance we go go out having great dinner and and uh and yes team up with the with the crew and just go out and have a good time nice well speaking of coming to america uh, yeah. is this primal fear have plans to hit the states anytime <laughs> Maybe we gotta ask the politicians, politicians to, <laughs> to, to to lift the proclaims or whatever they. I think it's lifted now, but anyway, the situation is still not uh, so secure and, and somehow so yeah. open that we we are able to do this. And it's it's a big bummer. I mean, we would have been touring last year in, in May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of that, speaking of that, Ralph, I actually had tickets. Uh, you guys were gonna be in Cleveland. And I was going to yeah. go see you guys. You were going to open for Symphony X on the 25th anniversary tour. And man, oh. I was so bummed because it would have been my first experience to experience you guys yeah. live. And I've always yeah. wanted to see you guys live. So, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's just tailing in of what. Uh, yes. What was... And everybody's the same situation. So that's the bad thing. And I know that every, when everything will open up again, we, I don't still know, still don't know how and how many clubs and i mean i'm talking about the mediocre or middle middle class clubs not the, the big venues whatever you know how they survive all this the same it's the same like uh, the musicians yeah. they have to survive the situation in the end so and then everybody's going on tour at the same time <laughs> so that's it's got to be a difficult situation again but hey i mean musicians um always survived somehow because we are doing this for our from from our hearts so in the end what you're doing from your heart you will never somehow surrender in the end right yeah right and it goes back to that what we were talking about earlier in the program about uh the community and the mutual mm -hmm. respect because metal is it is its own like separate community you know and i think that mutual respect not only along with bands and uh band members but along with the fans and the bands I mean, there's Absolutely. Like, it's, it's and that's community. why I like the 70,000 tons of uh, metal crews, because they're, they're the fans and the musicians are literally sitting in one boat. <laughs> and uh, then you, you, you meet a lot of fans and, and uh, you, then you, uh, that's the first, not the first time I knew that there's the big community in metal anyway, because I was there when I was a kid too. But, you know, in the end, uh, it's always great to see those people having somehow uh, 
the community together and have the parties together and the pre the pre parties for the 70k is also just amazing every time so it's 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 a huge family from all around the globe in the end i know everybody's individual but in in, in terms of metal everybody's somehow linked together as a family member and that's just great you know So as of right now, you guys don't have any tour dates or anything set up right now? We have something set up for um, next year then, which is a little bit early to talk about now, but uh, okay. we have to still sit and wait a little bit how the situation will come up with all these variations, mutations, which are coming up. Uh, I've got uh, some, some theoretical, hypothetical kinds of situations that I'd like to just kind of get your, your comments on. And some are kind of, kind of fun and, and uh, just kind of rely on, on your interests. So I'm just going to throw some out here. Um, I want you to create a super group, you know, four musicians, any four musicians past or present that you would want to play with or sing with. Uh, except they can't be anyone who you've played with before. Can you can you think of about four musicians who would be like, oh God, I this would be the band of all bands. Oh yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Cozy Powell, Cozy Powell on drums. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the John N. Bristle on bass. Mm -hmm. Um Glenn Tipton and KK Downing together. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep them together. That's great. <laughs> Tim Ripper Owens, Rob Halford, and me. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Then I don't lift, think the microphones lift, could handle that. <laughs> and, then we, and then we lift the roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that okay. that would be a hell of a show. We got to get that going. You got to get that together. <laughs> yeah. Well, ears would bleed. Oh, there's too many high notes. I don't think human ears could handle it. Fredville, you want to tell Ralph about your cousin Eric? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I have a cousin that plays drums, and he actually uh, he he was with uh, Ripper Owens, the the Beyond Fear. Uh, uh, he played drums for him on that album. So. Uh, yeah, I have a slight, tiny little connection. <laughs> That's cool, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah. So Tim is are... nice, oh, very nice guy as well. Tim, absolutely, I love the man. Okay, Ralph, we have an alien from outer space shows up and asks you to represent metal in three songs. What three songs would best represent metal from you? Uh huh. Okay. Um, now you have to think, them? like, oh, sorry, I was just saying, now you want to think maybe, are you trying to welcome them or you want to scare them away? So, <laughs> you know, that's a different option. <laughs> so, starting early, that would be somehow Riding on the Wind from Judas Priest, and of course, The Ace of Space from Motorhead, which is nice. more the rock and roll style of metal, right? Yeah. And, um, so nowadays, metal is forever from Primal Fear. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. Because that the word, the word metal is just included. <laughs> right. Great. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. You just saved the earth from annihilation with that answer. Yes. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you yeah. ever seen Motorhead? Have you ever seen Motorhead play? Yes. We, we also played on a festival together. And I remember... Oh going to Lemmy when he had some problems and we were standing on stage and they're, my gear doesn't, my gear doesn't work. <laughs> and, and I, Great, and Lemmy. I, and, I, and I just said, oh, you got to kick ass and he was, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a great oh, Lemmy. Yeah. yeah, Motorhead is one of those bands where you hear a few songs, you know exactly what you're going to get. You know, they're yeah, just, absolutely. there's no nonsense. And I like that he called themselves a rock and roll band and not a metal band, you know, and that's yes. how they introduce themselves. You know, we are Motorhead and we play rock and roll, you know, and they just, <laughs> just start yeah. blasting, you know, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what uh, would you tell your childhood self about being a professional musician? Um, you did exactly right, but it could be a little bit faster. So, <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, if you don't collect the experience you did, you would not be where you are. So everything is okay. So like, mm, this is not really answering the question, but I'm, if I speak to myself like now, 40 years ago, when I was 16, Jesus Christ, um, <laughs> uh, I would say 
in terms of music, do exactly what you did. Because uh, if you don't somehow go slow, if it's getting too fast sometimes, it's not healthy, you know. So in the end, if it's a slow process, no matter in, uh, you always um, have, you have to, you have to have the down times to, to grow and to learn, you know. Mm. So there's always better times afterwards. So that's what also happened to me. The journey is makes makes you what you are at the end of it. Exactly, you know? but that, that, yeah. that goes for. I think that's for every profession, not in, not only sure. for music, musicians, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. excellent. Yeah. So, what do you uh, what do you do for fun? Like to unwind. Like when it's your day, you got nothing more to do with Primal Fear. You don't have any classes to teach. Uh, you're not having anything with business. You've got Ralph Day. What yeah. What do you do? Well. You know, it's so easy nowadays, switch on Netflix or whatever, or I mean, building, having a construction in the garden, building fence to the neighbor. <laughs> I just, I just uh, build the foundation of uh, uh, concrete. And that was, you know, wow, that was a hell of a job. I didn't need the gym this week and then everything was hurting <laughs> because I was, I was digging the dirt, the big holes and everything. Mm. And I was also mixing the concrete and putting it back in the holes. So I know what I did this week. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I don't do for fun, but it was uh, something different than making music, creating yeah. music. <laughs> that's such a not, not rock and roll activity. No, that's funny. <laughs> it's not, it's not, absolutely not. <laughs> but in the end, it's, uh, it's somehow a good, uh, somehow um, balance to sport because it's also sport in the end. And that's what I also do in my free time when I have the time trying to keep in shape a little bit. Not, not. Uh, I'm growing a little bit of a belly, but that's also normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I try yeah. to prevent. I try to prevent from it. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of, net, of Netflix, what do you like to watch? What's your? Uh, do you have a genre that you really gravitate towards? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much into the action, and um, you know, like. Um, Sometimes also spacey stuff could be good. Sometimes I even watch science, uh, science series when you watch uh, the space uh, themes and everything. I'm, I'm really much, pretty much interested in uh, astronomic and everything. Not astrologic, it's more the astrono astronomic, the more science part of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, when I sometimes also watch shows uh, in terms of uh, space, science and everything. Yeah, but Sometimes also basically just like uh, uh, of course Game of Thrones when it came up I think you know I watched it very late but uh, of course I caught up with it we caught up with it in the end those kind of things pretty much uh, fiction and uh, and action combined together which sometimes is really great. There's a great I don't know if you have the series over in Germany uh, called uh, How the Universe Works. Yes, I think uh, it's... TV series with Mike Rowe. I think he narrates it. That's really, really interesting. Yeah, we also have those cosmos uh, and, and stuff. The, yeah, and mm -hmm. science series going on. Yeah, I like to watch that. And yeah, nature and everything. And yeah. Do you like Thanks. horror movies? Horror movies, Ralph? Because we have horror. Yes, yeah, so my boy wanted to watch horror movies with me, and then. Sometimes it's great. Yes, I also do uh, watch these once in a while horror movies. And I was also like, in the Devil's Five. I was in America shooting this Devil Five, Devil's Five movie, which is also a splatter horror movie in the end. Okay. And I took part in it as uh, Ansel Schneider. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the role I played, and uh, it's going to be in a, uh, an interview pretty soon because the film is released now. I think it was released earlier, but uh, it, it's it's on a, on a on a other platform now. I have to inform myself a little bit more to to tell more about it in the end. Nice. What what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? The movie that still frightens you to this day, or is there? I one? Think what, yeah, I mean, it was uh, The Exorcist. <laughs> nice. And, but that, I was a kid. I mean, I was. Yep. 15, 16 years old, and of course that was scary. But if you watch it nowadays, well, or you know, uh, what was the other one? The Haunting, and uh, can't remember. I'm, I'm not good at names today. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, we, yeah. we just did a show on The Exorcist a few weeks ago because it, yeah. it is also the, our scariest movie as well. I mean, I, 
yeah. I might have been 11 or so, you know, yeah, when I yeah. saw it and it, it has scarred me to this day. So, you know, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, Especially, I mean, it was always the, the time also, it was shining for instance, you know, it was also in, in the big oh, hotel yeah. and everything yeah. that was the same, same time. Yeah. So those, those things were scary at the beginning, of course, and all these, um, is it and everything you know and uh, yeah you know oh, yeah. yeah clowns that's never a good thing uh, you know they should clowns. just stay in their car yeah <laughs> and not come out right <laughs> chop up you were you were gonna ask a question chop uh no no actually i was i was just kind of i was curious to hear you know what ralph's uh, favorite films are you know in the, in the genres and obviously he answered those so yeah i'm, I'm good thank you okay cool dreadful i've got like one more yeah i'm pretty uh, much tapped out here <laughs> oh, okay yeah yeah i mean i've been checking off things as we've gone so yeah i just you know we had come up where we were trying to think of just questions that were just not you know, like the like these kinds of questions just kind of the, the everyone's going to answer a little differently but uh Ooh. one that uh you know dreadful had come up with was the concept of uh you know like you know, this concept of, of nuclear war is imminent, missiles are on their way. What five CDs do you grab on your way to the fallout shelter? Like basically the last five CDs you're going to listen to for the interim, for the two years <laughs> you're going to be in the, what, what, are, what are your top five picks? I mean, this is not a logical question because everything is <laughs> in here. So. Well, that's true. That's true. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, five CDs would be, uh, wow. I mean, Accept, for instance, I like uh, Balls to the Wall back in the days. So I thought uh, um, to come back to the area of New Wave of British Heavy Metal, to the era, not the area. Uh, I forgot the German bands like Scorpions and Accept mm -hmm. and so forth. They also mm -hmm. uh, got a big impact on me. So uh, Accept I like very much. And um, it would be an album from Accept, an album from Judas Priest, an album from Iron Maiden. It would be uh, Dio, of course. And uh, maybe a Queen Strike Operation Mindcrime. Oh, yeah, great, that, great choices. <laughs> right, right, you're hitting in our sweet spot, Ralph. Uh -huh. you know, it's just so great. Yeah. So, um, are are there are there any bands that you haven't played with yet that you would like to, like, in, you know, in, in a dream circumstance, like who 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 would you like to be sharing a billing with? Well, I mean, I said names before, maybe, uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, f during the years you met so many and yeah. like I said, they also got friends somehow and in the end, I'm fine with Primal Fish, so it's all good. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's great. You know, I, I appreciate that and, um, you know, and I, I, I'm trying to think as fanboys there's always groups we want to see and trying to envision that but but it's got to be different on the other end you know because once you get boy, circles, as, a, as a fanboy you don't want to destroy the band in, in joining it right <laughs> right exactly right Ex exactly that's yeah we we had just talked about that last week uh sometimes it could be good and bad and like you said there's sometimes it's a bad day you mm -hmm. know so um yeah. i think the only last question i i would have as far as these kind of uh personalized questions like uh what song haunts you meaning like do you have a favorite song something that that you go back to over and over again because it has special meaning for you not just within primal fear but any any song in the world yes i mean beyond the realms of death from from wow. Judas priest is such a great song which i listened up and down when i was 19 18, 18 19 years old it was just uh everything in there the beautiful guitars the beautiful melody the hard groove which is coming in and everything it's and uh, the story so that song always grabs me when i hear it it's great love it mm -hmm. wonderful that's great yeah i you know ralph i i cannot believe how quickly this hour has gone um, Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. The same thing. Right. And, and <laughs> we have had a wonderful time, and, and we hope that you have enjoyed yourself. Uh, absolutely, as well. yes, uh, absolutely. Thank you for being so gracious uh, with us, and we are all fans, and we are looking forward to the day when 
primal fear is going to be able to come back and, and come to the States. And um, if it's okay, I'll, I'll just email you occasionally because we'll be getting yeah. updates about primal fear because we want to come see you. You know, yeah, we want to we, we say, Hey, remember the heavy metal horror guys? We want to give <laughs> you some stickers or whatever, some swag that we've got, you know? Absolutely. And, yeah. So uh, just, just thank you so much. Any other last questions? Thank Chop you. dreadful. Thanks anything? for having me. Thanks. All good. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, it's pleasure. been our, it's been our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So, uh, you can find Heavy Metal Horror on unsaneradio.com. Listen to full episodes or download to your device. You can find us on Facebook at Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. On Instagram, look for Montag Lewis. One word. This is Montag, Master of Illusion. And Chop Top. And Dread Bull. And our guest, Ralph. <laughs> and you have been listening to Ralph before you come out. Can you give us a good heavy metal horror? Can you like can you do something? <laughs> heavy heavy metal, metal, metal horror. horror. <laughs> oh thank awesome. So much. Oh thank you Ooh. so much. Oh on, th we've forgotten this with every other guest. Could okay. we ask one favor of you? Give us just like a little this is Ralph Sheepers of Primal Fear, and you're listening to Heavy Metal Horror. Could you just give us like a little bumper we could play at the beginning of our Absolutely. show? Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. Go Anytime you're ready, go right ahead. Hey, this is Ralph Sheepers, and you're listening and watching to Heavy Metal Horror. Oh, that's Perfect. So good. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. So you. Much, thank Ralph. you, Ralph. Oh, my God. This has uh, been wonderful. Yeah. Um, I just, just can't believe that you're having this opportunity. So thank you so much. Yeah. All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. For me, it's uh, movie time now. Okay, what do well, you enjoy? Or Amazon Prime? Uh, we always pick a, a, a film together, my girlfriend and me, my boy. So we will see what's what's coming up. All right, I'm not, I, do, I don't know yet. <laughs> All right, well, have a great evening. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, very Thank much. you. Take care, Ralph. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys. Bye. All right. There we go. Wow. There it is, guys. <laughs> oh, oh bro. Another great bro. one. That's just... oh, <sighs> so cool. It's so, so cool. cool. <laughs> that was wow. great. That was another very enjoyable, oh, fun interview, sure. man. Absolutely. Yeah, it went by so fast. Just yeah. crazy fast, you know. It really did. <laughs> and, uh, I, I always, I'm sorry if I took the lion's share of asking questions. I No, it's fine. No, I mean, this is fine. We got a whole hour to fill, so you know. I'm such that, a huge fanboy that it's like I was. I had a lot of nerves. You know? Well, I knew you were nervous there, Joe. Yeah. So I thought, okay, because I I had all my questions written down. I've been you know kind of you know marking them off as I as I oh. went, but um, I wanted to. What be a prepared. gentleman! What a what a gentleman! And what a yeah. great uh, great guy! Yeah, yeah really great guy. I <laughs> this is so <laughs> cool, man. Kim and I were like looking at her, and she was just shaking her head. She's like. I still can't believe it. What you guys are doing. I'm like, I know. Like, this is fucking crazy. I mean, it's really crazy. You know? Yeah. 